Good morning and happy Easter. Welcome to online worship for Sandy Springs United Methodist Church on this Resurrection Sunday 2021. We are so glad that you are worshiping with us today as we celebrate the risen Lord. I invite you to find our downloadable worship guide. It's on our website. It's also in the comments if you're watching us on YouTube or Facebook. You can follow along with our order of service, sign in to our online connect card. Let us know that you're here. If you have prayer requests, if you're new to our community and would like more information, you can also see the announcements about all that's going on in the life of our church. We are so glad that you are joining us today. Our worship rhythm continues through May 9th. We will have online worship every Sunday at 10 a.m. right here on YouTube and Facebook and on our church website. We'll also have outdoor worship at 11 a.m. in the Activity Center parking lot. We do ask you to register for that and registration goes live the Monday prior every week. Friends, as we settle into our Easter worship together, know that whoever you are, Wherever you find yourself on your faith journey, you are God's beloved child and you are welcome. I invite you to join me in saying our Easter call to worship. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Sing for joy, O heavens, and exult, O earth. Break forth, O mountains, into singing. For God has comforted us and will have compassion on suffering ones. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and I am life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, yet shall they live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. For Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have died. And we shout with triumph, where, O death, is your victory? Where, O death? is your sting. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Christ the Lord is risen today, Alleluia. Earth and heaven in chorus say, Alleluia. Raise your joys and trials high, Alleluia. Sing ye hands and earth Oh, oh, oh. 
excited to be with you today. And I do have a question to start off the day. What is it? You ready? The question is, has something ever surprised you? Hmm? What's something that has surprised you? Kai? How long I have to wait for my birthday? Oh, yeah, every year. And how, and it's also surprising that I grow every night. Hmm. Yeah, sometimes I get surprised by how fast you grow all of a sudden. Seems like, you know, like we bought, ordered shoes for you, and then by the time they arrived, you had outgrown them. It was crazy. Do you remember when that happened? Fishy. Fishy, indeed. Fishy Yeah. Yeah, surprising. Sometimes there are good surprises, and sometimes there are surprises that we don't love, right? Um, and in our Bible story today, there is a surprise that seems not good at first, but turns out to be amazing. Amazing. Is turns it, out to be the best surprise. Is it how Jesus died, but then God resurrected him? Mm -hmm. Let's tell the story. You ready? It starts off with the women the ladies. What? The ladies. Oh my gosh. Yes. So very, very early in the morning. Women. On um, a couple days after Jesus died, three days, uh, Mary and the women went to Jesus' tomb to um, prepare his body for his funeral because he was in the tomb and he was dead, but they wanted to put special oils on his body so that it wouldn't smell yucky and put the right wrappings on him. When they got to that tomb, the stone had been rolled away. And what was inside? Nothing. Nothing. Now, if this was your Easter egg in your Easter basket and there was nothing inside it, Kai, how would you feel? I would feel very sad. And I actually feel sad now because I thought there was going to be some. <laughs> <laughs> it is sad. It's disappointing, right? You know what? That's how Mary felt, too. Wait, maybe there's something invisible here. Hmm, you can check it out. Mary was so upset. Um, she ran back to find the disciples and said the stone was rolled away. Someone has taken Jesus' body um, and called them. You can just let the other half of that go. Um, called them to come help her figure out what was going on. The disciples came to the tomb with Mary and they looked and all they found were the wrappings, the cloth that Jesus had been wrapped in. And they had no idea where Jesus' body was or what to do. So they went back to town and left Mary there crying. And Mary stood outside the tomb and someone came and asked her, woman, why are you crying? And she said, they've stolen my Lord's body. They've taken his body. And then again, someone asked her, she looked up and saw someone, didn't recognize him at first. And someone asked her, why are you crying? And she said, They've taken his body. I don't know where he is. And that man said, Mary. And, and she knew suddenly that it was Jesus and he was alive and he had been resurrected. He was back to life. You know when you were talking about that? Because it reminded me of the disciples and that last communion that they had. Oh, what reminded you of that? Um... Just saying, Jesus, you're alive! <laughs> um, well, she recognized. And the whole death of Jesus. Yeah, he had died for real. And uh, they were all pretty sad about it. So now that Mary knew. A toast to Jesus. A toast to Jesus being alive now. Um, Mary wanted to celebrate now that Jesus was alive. She was so excited that Jesus was alive. So she ran back and told all of the disciples so that they could all celebrate Jesus being alive.
And that's how we get to celebrate Jesus being alive today. Um, that we know that Jesus came back to life. That God is bigger than anything in the world. Bigger than even death. That God's love is bigger than the, the biggest things that can happen in the world. Now, in the Christian church, for a long, long time, there is a special way that we celebrate. Um, there's a word that we put away at the start of the season of Lent. Do you remember what that word is? Was it Alleluia? That's right. This year in our congregation, we had a little butterfly that we had that word on that we put away. Oh, that big butterfly that we colored and we printed it into a tiny one? Yes, that's right. Last year we colored it and made a big version of it, and this year we printed a small one and we put it away in our homes. Remember that video when you saw it? Uh-huh. Um, and we put it away at the start of Lent, and today is the day that we get to bring that out because Alleluia is a word that celebrates God and God's love in a big way. Yes, ma'am. I was talking to everyone else, too, if they remember the video. Hmm, okay. Cool. Do you all remember? Um, and we get to celebrate that today because the resurrection is a big celebration of God's love for us and a celebration of God's love for uh, flowing through us to one another. So today we get to bring that word hallelujah out and lift it high and celebrate God. And at Sandy Springs United Methodist, for several years, we have celebrated that as our children brought the word Alleluia attached to balloons, balloons. and lifted them up in the front of we our had sanctuary. We have in Body Doll Art Studio where I made this kind of balloon where we rolled it up and put it in the sack. Yeah, we had in our home, we hid this particular Alleluia in a um, a, a crafted hot air balloon. But now we have this helium filled balloon and since we can't um, be in our sanctuary lifting balloons all together, Kai is going to lift this one um, and on the count of three she's going to release the balloon and we are all going to shout Alleluia together. You ready? First can I tell you guys something? Sure. My hair is like floating to the balloon. Is your hair going to shout Alleluia and lift with the balloon? Yeah. Awesome, I love it. All right, ready? You ready to release it? One, two, three. Alleluia! We are so excited to celebrate the resurrection with you today. Um, and instead of saying, may the peace of Christ be with you today, we are going to say, Christ Alleluia. is risen, Alleluia. Ready? Christ, Christ is, is risen, risen. Hallelujah. Let us pray. God of us all, we give you thanks for your love, your grace, and your power on this blessed resurrection morning. We thank you for the many friends and loved ones who have made the extra effort to gather here with us today. We thank you for the brilliance of the colors on us and around us that remind us of new life. Today, blessed God, we gather to remember and celebrate. We remember Jesus who healed the sick and raised the dead. We remember Jesus who gathered children to himself and dealt kindly with women centuries before our efforts at women's liberation. We remember Jesus who always kept the mission in the forefront and the minutia in the lowest seat. We remember Jesus, Son of God, Song of God, who sang God's melody to us. We remember Jesus, who consented to suffer and die at our hand. Today, Almighty God, we celebrate the fact that death could not hold Jesus in the grave. We celebrate that not even death is able to separate us from the love of God. We celebrate the new life that we have in Christ. We celebrate the assurance that we have of eternal life. Today, we celebrate and give thanks that in life, in death, in life after death, 
we belong to God. Now let us pray together the prayer Jesus taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. A gospel lesson comes from John chapter 20. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciple set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. And the other disciple who reached the tomb first also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet, they did not understand the scripture that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, they have taken away my Lord and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabuni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me because I have not yet ascended to the Father, but go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my father and your father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O God. For you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. I have seen the Lord. These are Mary's first words to the disciples after she encounters the risen Christ. This is the very first Easter sermon. I have seen the Lord. Now, you know, and I know that at first, Mary didn't realize who she was encountering exactly what she was experiencing that first Easter. We meet her in a garden. She arrives in the dark early in the morning and she expects to find Jesus's body there in the tomb, expects to pray, to care for him, to engage in rituals of mourning. She shows up with eyes still red from days of tragedy and tears, inexplicable loss. Yet she still puts one foot in front of the other and shows up for Jesus, even in his death. Her eyes are so blurry that at first she doesn't trust what she's seeing. She expects to find a body there wrapped in clothes, but there's not one. The tomb is empty and the grave clothes, they are folded up by the entrance. She's got to tell somebody, so she finds Peter and the beloved disciple 
They don't believe her. They have to see for themselves. So they come running. The beloved disciple believes, but he says nothing. We don't know what Peter thinks. We do know that both of them run back to their homes. Mary, though, Mary sticks around. She demands answers. She's weeping. She's mourning. She's determined to find his body and bring it back to its rightful resting place. She assumes it's been stolen. Well, here we find ourselves friends on this Easter morning, 2000 years later, and there are signs of spring breaking all around us. From the greening of the trees to the symphony of the flowers that are bursting out in vibrant colors right now. First, we saw the Bradford pears and cherry blossoms. Now we've got dogwoods and azaleas blooming. Our eyes are still blurry from a year like no other. We are carrying losses big and small in our hearts, mourning the deaths of loved ones from COVID and other illnesses. The layers of grief mean that we couldn't be together in final days, many of us, or share in communal rituals. We've had the loss of communal life as we've known it, as a society, as a church the loss of everyday routines and rituals that now have been true for over a year and they have got a lasting effect. And yet here we find ourselves on Easter, signs of spring and new life around us, showing up, putting one foot in front of the other, looking for Jesus. And we hear this day Mary say these life-saving, world-changing words, I have seen the Lord. Now, before Mary proclaims this good news, tells the greatest story the world has ever known, she's got a little discovery of herself to do. So Mary, beneath her tears, asks two angels if they know the whereabouts of the body that was in that tomb. They say, why are you weeping? As if crying is somehow out of the ordinary at a graveside. Then she turns around, not getting the answer she wants. She sees a man she supposes to be the gardener. And again, she's asked, woman, why are you weeping? Mary begs and pleads. She even accuses this man saying desperately, sir, if you are the one who has carried the body away, just tell me where you have laid him. I will take him. Please help me. Just give me my Jesus back. Mary needs her savior. She looks up through those tear-soaked eyes with a worn-out body and soul. And then that man looks right in her eyes and says, Mary, Mary, my beloved child. And in that instant, she knows him in the saying of her name. She says his right back, Rabbi, Jesus, teacher. Her tears of mourning turn to tears of joy light breaks forth on this day and she believes. Jesus says her name and she knows that he is risen from the dead. He's alive and so is she, free from tears and pain and mourning, surprised by this good and extraordinary news that death is not the end. Now the scripture doesn't tell us what Mary does next. But we do know that Jesus says to her, Mary, don't cling to me. I imagine that as soon as she realized who it was, she embraced him. She did not want that moment to end. She was holding on to him literally for dear life. And yet Jesus says to Mary, don't cling to me. I didn't come back just for you, Mary, just to say your name. I came for the whole world. Now that you have seen me, you must go and tell others. Spread the good news. Go, Mary, and tell my story. So she does. With boldness and courage, probably still some confusion and bewilderment, belief and yet unbelief, but with joy in her heart, Mary finds those other disciples and she says, I have seen the risen Lord. So here we are all these years later, 
We are worshiping and we hear this good news from Mary. I have seen the Lord. On this day of resurrection, we look back on a tough year and reflect on all the ways that in the midst of so much suffering and loss, we have seen the risen Lord. We have witnessed joy in the face of pain, hope in the midst of despair, and we have seen life and life internal in the face of death. Friends, in a year when more children than ever have gone hungry in our country, we have seen restaurants and food pantries and volunteers step up and step in to feed others. Believing that when we feed those who are hungry, we are feeding Jesus. Our church community has stepped up multiple times to donate food. Most recently in our Lenten food drive, we have 630 items of food that you have collected. These are items given to local food pantries right here in our community. Friends, we have seen the risen Lord. In a year when human connection has been cut off in all of our usual ways, I have witnessed you send cards, call, learn to Zoom and conference call, deliver food and Valentine's Lent and Advent bags, record yourselves for online worship, give generously. You have continued to pray and to give, adapt how small groups meet, have grace for one another, welcomed new people into the life of our church virtually. Friends, I have seen and experienced the risen Lord through you over this last year. Thanks be to God. And in a year when the death toll has tragically exceeded anything we could ever anticipate, anything we ever thought we could bear, that good news of the gospel, it has never wavered. Now God doesn't will excess deaths and the grief is real and it is painful. And yet because of Jesus Christ, we can cling to that truth that death is not the end. We show up for each other in the midst of grief in new ways. We trust that our loved ones, though gone too soon, are a part of that great cloud of witnesses surrounding us this very day. We have seen the risen Lord. If you're anything like me, maybe you can't always see the hope and the presence of Christ the signs of life that make a way out of no way right there in the moment. It's often looking back that we can see the Spirit's movement and say, ah, yes, the Spirit of the Lord was surely in that place. But my hope and my prayer on this Easter Sunday is that we do everything in our power to see Jesus right in front of us, right now, right here. That we don't act like the beloved disciple. Maybe we believe, but then we just keep it to ourselves. That we don't just see something that may confuse us like Peter and then just run back to our homes. No, my hope is that all of us can commit to be like Mary. That we commit to look for Jesus until we find him. <laughs> And then because of resurrection, we can really believe that that is him right there in front of us and believe that he is indeed calling each one of our names as beloved children. But also that we believe he's not just for us and us alone. So friends, let us be like Mary. Let us not just cling to Jesus on our own, but begin to share what we have seen with boldness, with courage, probably still some confusion and bewilderment, belief and unbelief mingled together, but still with joy in our hearts. Let us go out declaring, I have seen the risen Lord. So that we shout alongside with Mary and 2,000 years of Christians who continue to tell this story. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, 
who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. As we respond to God's word today in a time of offering, we want to celebrate the offering we've given throughout Lent through our Lenten food drive. Thanks to the donations of our congregation, our preschool, and our soccer families, we have collected 139 boxes of cereal, 116 boxes of macaroni and cheese, 82 pounds of pasta, 53 containers of sauce, 55 rolls of toilet paper, 39 rolls of paper towels, and 137 assorted other items for a total of 621 items donated to Solidarity and Sandy Springs Charter Middle School food pantries. Thank you to everyone who contributed and acted as the hands and feet of Christ in this community during the season of Lent. Please join me in a time of prayer. God of new life, your love conquers all things, even death. You offer us this love, bringing new life when all seems lost, resurrecting us when we need it the most. You inspire us to give back to you in every way that we can, bringing life in a world in need. Bless the offerings that we bring today, that they will bring new life to those in need, sharing the good news of resurrected Christ to the world. Amen. And now you are invited to continue giving towards the ministries of the church. We are grateful for how your generosity continues to change lives and the community around us. You can donate on our secure website at ssumc.org backslash give or by texting SSUMC give to 73256 or by mailing a check to the church.
a joy and a privilege to experience Easter worship with you. As you go out of this place, receive this blessing. May you go out shouting alongside Mary, I have seen the risen Lord. For Christ is risen, Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Amen.